Oh my god, Marvel's about to take DC's lunch money again. Marvel games are about to start coming out like the movies, and I got no problem with that. But what about the DC games? See, I'm like Thanos. Balanced, as all things should be. Exactly. Here we go again. DC falling behind. They ain't no spoilers to this. We've seen this story before. Now that Gotham Knights has come out and has become yet another DC miss, it is now up to Rocksteady to save the day. I trust that Rocksteady will deliver with this game just like the rest of their games. It's it's not like anything has changed at Rocksteady. Oh my God. <laughs> this is alarming news, not for the game, but for the future of DC games. Yo, what's good? You already know I'm Ken Wall, and despite the news, we shouldn't be worried about Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. We should be worried about the future of DC games. Now that the founders of Rocksteady are gone, this now leaves DC games in somewhat unworthy hands. The new team at Monolith gotta prove themselves with the new Wonder Woman game, which I'm confident they can. WB Montreal gotta clean up their act, and WB Games gotta stop taking so long to come out with games. Newsflash, y'all ain't Rockstar. This reminds me of back in 2008 when The Dark Knight came out. DC was on top and had the keys to the kingdom. Then they pulled a not giving the ball to Marshawn Lynch at the one yard line. They fumbled the bag. And now we have a bunch of in denial DC fanboys that drive up the score on Rotten Tomatoes on every DC mess that comes out today. So today we're going to talk about the state of Suicide Squad Kill. You know what? From now on, I'm just going to say Suicide Squad because that title is so goddamn long and my radical solution to save DC games. Before we begin, allow me to give you a friendly reminder to like this video and if you end up enjoying it here at my channel, know that I keep you up to date with the latest open world game news and video essays where I go deeper into other gaming topics. Other links in the description box below. Thanks crew. So, is Suicide Squad in trouble? Sorry, I had to pause for dramatic effect. No. In the departure letter, president of WB Games has said that the game is nearly complete and that both the co-founders will be leaving at the end of this year. To be honest, when they delayed it earlier this year, I thought this game was going to be moved to the back half of 2023. I'm glad that this is not the case and this means that we should be getting this game between the months of March and June. More good news about the state of the game is that Hill and Walker released a joint statement that did not indicate that their move of leaving was due to any sort of fighting. So Suicide Squad is fine. We don't know if the game is good or not because obviously no one has played it. But if the development is as normal as it would be then, I wouldn't see why this game wouldn't be great. I can't wait to see this father-son battle next year. Suicide Squad versus Spider-Man 2. I love how the Suicide Squad gameplay is inspired by Sunset Overdrive the same way Spider-Man was inspired by the Arkham games. I hope we get a full reveal soon. Not at the Game Awards though. What do you mean by that? At the Game Awards, they really don't be doing no full deep dives. And we have had three trailers for this game. It's time to see more of the moment to moment gameplay. Don't get me wrong. The gameplay trailer was great and it did show some of that, but it was still heavily edited. I would also like to see what this game is going to receive post launch since there are rumors that this game will include some live service elements. This wouldn't surprise me, and this really shouldn't surprise you since this is the current climate in gaming. Gotham Knights has become yet another DC miss, and this has me worried. The Warner Bros. company just had a major shakeup with its merger with Discovery, so divisions are going to be looked at and evaluated. Although the gaming division brings in good money, it's even more money to maintain AAA studios and develop AAA games. Last time I checked, WB's flagships are movies and television, and those aren't cheap. Now add AAA development. This could explain why it takes so goddamn long to get a DC game. In comparison, when you look at the Marvel games and what they have been doing, they have been partnering with companies that are built for this. With the exception of NetherRealm, WB Games is now comprised of the Ubisoft Juniors, aka WB Montreal, Rocksteady, who just lost its co-founders, Monolith, who hasn't made a game in years, and Avalanche, who's probably just gonna be the Harry Potter studio. With that being said, I suggest if 
both Wonder Woman and Suicide Squad both aren't commercially and critically successful, then WB Games should chuck up the deuces with their studios and take the LucasArts approach by allowing developers to come in and pitch them ideas for DC games. This would allow more games to come out. It would be cheaper for WB Games because they don't have to maintain AAA studios and AAA talent. But the most beneficial part to all of this is more talented developers would come in. You know how many developers have openly said they would love to make a Superman game? I'll admit, this is rash. I'm just so disappointed in DC right now. Like, we got Gotham Knights and Black Adam in the same week, man. Talk about kicking a man when he's down already. Now that a lot of Marvel games are coming out, I just want the same thing for DC games. In conclusion, tell me how you feel about the future of DC games. As always, you already know I'm Ken Wall. Remember to like and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching today's video, and I'll see you guys soon.